Welcome to the deletion of groundwater potential zone mapping by using analytical hierarchical process part 2. In my present study, a combination of AHP process and GIS techniques were used for deleting the groundwater potential zones. The AHP is an effective tool for dealing with complex decision making in groundwater related fields, which is introduced by Thomas Satch in year 1980. The tool is useful for reducing complex decision to a series of pairwise comparisons and then synthesizing the result. Additionally, the AHP tools is a suitable technique for evaluating the consistency of the results, consequently reducing the bias in the decision making process. The consistency ratio is the consistency index by the random consistency index value. If the value of consistency ratio is less than 10%, then it is considered as less consistency. If the value is greater than 10%, then it is considered as inconsistent. And if the value is equal to 0, then it is considered as the perfect consistency. The groundwater recharge potential zone was generated by considering the comparative importance of various thematic layers and their corresponding classes. Now let's watch the process for extracting the groundwater potential zone of our area. In the previous tutorial, we have already learned about the extraction of the factors that are needed for the groundwater potential zone extraction. In today's part, we will learn about the AHP process which is a very useful tool to extract the groundwater potential area but in previous video you have already seen that i have extracted the factors like drainage density lineament density slope land use land cover geomorphology geology and soil also but here i exclude the soil factor because it have only one sub try to take the factors which have more than one subclasses now for further calculation, select on Spatial Analyst tool, Overlay, Weighted Overlay. Now select the input raster as all the factors by clicking on the plus sign, add all the raster files one by one. I have already added the raster files. Now for this influence percentage, we need an Excel sheet to calculate the percentage influence of all the factors. Let's open the Excel sheet now. I have already added this Excel sheet in the description box. Kindly go through it. In this Excel sheet, we only need to put the factors and scale. It will automatically calculate the matrix table and weightage uh, for all the factors. As I am using 6 factors, so I will put here 6 as number of criteria. Now I will give a title to this Excel sheet. If you want, you can uh, select the author and date. In the criteria, we will put one by one the factors that we have extracted
now after uh, putting all the factors now we will go to the next excel sheet here you can see a comparison table here we have to compare one factor by one another this is the uh, scatter scale we have to use that is one means equal importance three means moderate importance five means strong importance seven means very strong and nine means extreme importance now here we will compare the factors by one another if, if we compare uh, drainage density with LULC then LULC is very much important than drainage density so we will mark it as B like this we will mark this now we have to set the scale according to the importance of the factor Now we will mark the LULC as 2, slope as 3, element density as 4, geology as 5 and geomorphology as 6. Like this we will compare the factors with one another and set the scale according to the importance of the factor. After filling the comparison table, you can see that there are some red marks that is the input is wrong. We will put the same input here to make it right. So now our comparison table is okay. Again, in, we will go to the previous sheet. Here you can see the weightage for the factors are calculated automatically. Here you can see the matrix table is automatically created below. Now we have automatically they have also created the weights now in the percentage influence we have to put the weights of the factors now the drainage density weight is 3.9 percent so we will put it as 4 in round figure now for linear and density the weightage is 14.8% so we will put it as 15 for slope the weightage is 8 so we will put it as 8 for LULC 
the weightage is 4.9 so we will put it as 5 For geomorphology, the weightage is 14.1, so we will put it in as 40. For geology, the weightage is 28.3, so we will put it as 28. The sum of influence should be always 100. Now in the scale value section, we need to compare the subclasses of the factors. Such as here the field value is 1, it denotes to very low, 2 denotes to low, 3 denotes to moderate and 4 denotes to high and 5 denotes to very high. In the scale value, we have to set the importance of each subclasses by comparing to other subclasses according to the KT scale. So let's put the scale value, let's put the importance of the subclasses. I am putting very low as 6 because it is very important. Like this we will put the scale value of each subclasses. As I have taken the scale value range from 1 to 6, so I will set the evolution scale as 1 to 9. Now select the output raster. Now OK. Our groundwater potential zone map was extracted. Now let's change the symbology. Now we will change the label.
here we can see that the green patches denotes to the very good groundwater potential zone and yellow patches indicates to good potential zones and brown patches indicates to poor potential zones so by visual according to my calculation the reliability of the output was determined by the calculate consistency index and consistency ratio values the formula has been used for consistency ratio is the consistency index by the random consistency index according to my calculation the consistency ratio is 6.8% means it is acceptable to continue the analysis hope you like the video kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the like button